How's it going everyone? Mask here. Now today, we're, uh, today's hero review, we're going to be looking at Ramu. Now I feel like Ramu's a really underappreciated unit. Um, she kind of, she falls out of that spotlight behind Rue. Everyone's always like, Rue, Rue, best support, Rue this. Now the cool thing about Ramu is she's really easy to get. You can choose her from the White or Dark Knight selector ticket at the end of the month that you get for free, or you can grab a white the White Knight Selector Ticket from the shop. I think it's only about $10 to get it, and uh, it's a really easy way to add a top tier support to your team if that's something you're missing to help round it off. I mean, a quick shout out to that, to the White and Dark Knight Selector Tickets that you can grab in the shop. If you ever are planning on spending money on this game, they're a fantastic way to really help get those missing pieces into your team. I think there's you can get Mary, uh, Demos, Nemesis from the Dark Knight Selectors. Mary and Demos were my were, were my top two. The White Knight Selector ticket is pretty much Ramu. She's by far the best choice there. Now, let's take a look at her skills. Her skill one, Sword Rush, it inflicts damage. I mean, it does a little bit of damage. 100% of a support's damage, not really look, worth looking at. But a 20% chance to stun for one turn. Now, when you're when you're skilling up this skill, it uh, I got a cheat sheet over here. It gets to 160% of her attack, 35% chance to stun, but still for one turn. So the stun doesn't increase, the, the chance to stun does increase by 15%, but uh, that's it, it's not a whole lot. So we, do, we definitely don't focus... Actually, to be perfectly honest, with a lot of heroes it becomes really obvious what you should focus of their skills, but it's uh, it's hard. It is hard with Ramu. Her second skill restores all allies HP by 20%, decrease their debuff duration by one turn. At level six, this is a 40% heal and increases de decreases debuff duration by two turns. So it's a, a decent cleanse, becomes a 40% heal, which is a significant amount. And uh, her third skill, Star of Hope, at level one revives two allies and restores their by 40% of their HP. But if you max this out, it becomes a 70% HP heal after the revive, and it actually revives three allies. Now that can be pretty clutch, considering uh, Ramu's level 60 passive, is she self-revives one time with 100% HP upon death. So she's most likely always going to be the last one alive on your team, and can bring three people back up with her if you have her third skill maxed. And uh, take a look at her natural passive, Healing Wind. Restores all allies HP by 10% at the end of the turn. This is really neat. When it, it works really well on Ramu herself too. When you have her stacked extremely high on HP. Right now I believe I have... Well, when her passive is active. And she, when her leader skill is active. Increasing her own HP by 20%. As well as all your wind and water allies. I think she's sitting over 18k. And this passive is healing her by almost 2,000 a turn alone. Now of her skills which one you want to use your skill ups on i mean this is pretty tough uh, in the increased chance to stun is probably going you're probably going to get the most use out of just because you're using skill one so often the 20 percent increased hp and two turns debuff duration like, you need cleanses like this is this is probably my hardest decision as to to suggest you which one of these skills to pour all your skill ups in i feel like the difference between reviving two and three allies just isn't enough to really focus on Star of Hope. Like, reviving, often I find myself waiting for a second ally to die as is to get value out of this third skill. So I think three would just be really overkill. So I'm I'm definitely between wanting increased stun chance and wanting the, the better cleanse and higher heal. It would really depend on where you're trying to use Ramu as well, on which one of those two you pick for your skill ups. Let's jump into her runes. Runes on her are pretty standard. I, I, I went through all the top people in, in the arena. A couple of them were running a complete set of HP runes, uh, runes, just maxing as much HP on her as possible. But just about everyone is running four rune of protection and two rune of life to give her that defense buff and HP buff. And uh, multi-strike is, is one of the most common things I found in slot six. Obviously, attack speed you find in there a lot too, and sometimes counter strike. But attack speed, sorry, there is no counter strike in slot six. But multi strike and uh, combinations of multi strike and count and uh, attack speed are the most popular things in slot six. Slot five, uh, HP recovery, 
obviously being one of the biggest things on her. Also though, I believe counter attack can fall in this, in this slot too. And I've seen a lot of people running a mixed bag of counter attack or HP recovery. Uh, for me, I just really enjoyed stacking HP recovery on her and then HP increase on the first three slots to get her max HP and have her healing by a ridiculous amount by herself every single turn. Because of this rune setup, she can solo uh, she can solo the, the Reina advent and it's quite hilarious. But a little bit of a more offensive approach, everybody in the arena seems to be taking because I guess more damage is more damage. In slot four, most people are running triple attack substats. I just, I just can't really convince myself that attack is worth it on a support character. But attack, 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 I'm seeing on almost everybody in the arena running a triple attack substat rune in slot four. And uh, the HP recovery here is often, it is often still here, but sometimes you see counter attack in here instead. HP, triple HP, and triple HP. That's pretty standard on everybody. So this, this rune here, I would prefer to have three HP increases on. But that's her, her skills and her runes. Let's check out her talents. Let's go to her... Uh, talent list actually. I think we were already there if I had just backed out. So in her first slot on her talents we have the choice between planned attack, 20% crit strike chance, 20% crit strike damage, or 70% chance to hide for two turns when using skill three. I just I, I don't think we need crit strike chance or crit damage on a support character. So 70% chance for a two turn hide after using skill three and reviving people on your team, which means you're in a desperate sort of like, I'm, I'm about to lose or I, I kind of need help situation, this hide's gonna come in clutch. I just, I really don't value crit strike chance or crit strike damage on Ramu, so this was a no brainer for me. Shadow Curtain in, in, as her 50 talent, her level 60, or sorry, 52 talent, she has a 50% chance to poison one enemy for two turns when using skill two. Now most, heroes have a very similar talent in their 52 slot and I almost never pick it. It just it just does not seem worth it. Skill 2 has a fairly long cooldown. Only 50% of the chance, 50% uh, of the time we're gonna what? Get a poison one enemy for two turns. It just doesn't seem worth it. So you have your choice then between elemental damage increase or just attack increase. Elemental damage increase would be great if you were only using Ramu in the boss dungeons because you're going to get the most bonus damage from this talent section when you're actually attacking a water a hero as Ramu because she's wind but that's just not too realistic so for me it's it's the weapon mastery 50% attack you're going to benefit from that every time she attacks or counter attacks or multi strikes I just haven't really poured a lot of resources into getting it to three stars because it really just didn't seem worth it. I got it to two. I'll leave it there till I'm going back through all my heroes and max minning. Now, 50% chance to shock one enemy for two turns when using skill one. Now this is a little better because you at least use skill one fairly often, but it, it for example, actually if that had fallen in the 52 tree here, I'd have a lot harder time passing it up. Still. It's, it's just, there's no way I'm, I'm passing up the chance to take 20% less damage from bosses or 20% less damage in the arena. This is 100% up to you whether you plan, if she's going to be a staple on your arena team, I highly suggest using the hero talent. Uh, if you're using, if she's, you're really taking her into a lot of hard dungeons and she's on all of your PvE teams, you're going to want this decreased damage taken from bosses. That being said, as you progress your account and your Ramu gets stronger, pretty much everyone, if you, as long as you plan even once or twice a week to bring her into the arena, you're going to want to be on the arena talent because eventually she's just, like your whole team simply just going to be strong enough to clear the PvE content and you're not going to need this 20% less damage to give, you, to give you an edge to clear it any easier. At that point, you're gonna want you're gonna want every advantage you can get versus other players in PvP, and that's where this talent's gonna be better. And that's her level 54, level 56, 20% chance to increase crit strike chance by 30% for two turns when attacked. Why does Ramu need crit? Swipe. <laughs> and then you have elemental suppression, so you'll take less damage from fire units when you're running this. I just this does not seem. Just maybe don't bring her against fire units. 15% defense, for me that's a no-brainer. Max that, that's a, uh, it's gonna be probably your, one of your most important talents to try to max out in here. 
She could use all the defense she can get. Get her super tanky. Now, Adrenaline. 10% chance to decrease skill cooldowns by one turn when attacked. I chose this one because her other options are just 20% bonus damage, 20% bonus damage. I mean, this is a tough one. This, this is probably my most conflicted talent tree. In fact, I just switched this over to Adrenaline. I believe I had a three-star Gladiator's Determination. It's just Ramu just doesn't do enough damage as is to warrant me using this talent to increase her damage more. I just, she's there as a support, she's doing her job, and if she gets those cooldowns quicker, I feel like that's in, in totally valuable to me. I mean, 10% is very is very low. You might get it once per, once per duel, once per wave, once per, you could get it once per dungeon even, but I just, I feel like, I feel like this is more useful. If you get those revives back off cooldown faster, your team's gonna make it through that dungeon. It's just not Ramu's job to pump out the DPS. And that's her 50, and of course her 60 talent. Should I, yes, you should get her 60 talent. She revives one time with 100% HP on upon death. That helps her even more to make sure she's able to save you from being wiped. She can bring your whole team back from a boss enraged full wipe just cause she'll self revive and then be able to pop and bring back at least two other of your teammates. I mean, that's a situation where you'll you'll really benefit from having this max, this skill at max, is you'll bring back three allies after a full team wipe and she self reses. So there's your talent tree. That's basically my, my full explanation of how I've decided how, what talents I have on her. We went over her runes, talents, uh, her skills, which skills we think we should max out. And uh, that's honestly, that's pretty much it. Ramu, she's, she was, <laughs> I got her like the second day I started playing, I bought a White Knight Selector ticket and that's how I got her. And uh, she's been a, one of the staple members on my team ever since. Uh, that's talents, skills, yeah, and enhancements. I mean, purple stars are universal for everybody. Level them up as quick as possible. And uh, that'll do it for my in-depth hero review of Ramu. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, please suggest any other heroes you want to see a review about in the description, in the comment section down below. I'm definitely going to be reading through them, and uh, I take your suggestions into consideration when I'm picking out who to review tomorrow. And uh, yeah, as always, guys, <laughs> if you're if you catch us live, you can be in the videos, in the chat running above my head here. My goal lately with my goal with Twitch and live streaming is going to be streaming at reset time. So 11, 11 a.m. Eastern is when it resets here in Canada where I live. And whenever your reset, the reset times are all synchronized. So whenever reset is, that's when you should be able to catch me live at twitch.tv slash maskscarin. You can grab my Facebook and my Twitter link in the description down below. That's a great way to keep up with when content's coming out and how to know when I'm going live as always. Quick friendly reminder to check out Bluestacks. The first thing in the description down below will be a link to download and install Bluestacks. It'll install Knights Chronicle, prompt you to do it right away, save you time. And of course, take advantage of that computer power, save your cell phone battery. Every time you use the link, it helps me out. I really appreciate it. And of course, pretty sure chat here is gonna help me out with the end of the video. What does it say up there? Oh yeah, stay classy.